Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Thursday the 28th of March, Maundy Thursday. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. O come, let us worship and bow down before Christ our Saviour. The Lamentation of Jeremiah Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall? But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord, for the Lord will not reject for ever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not afflict or grieve anyone. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only Son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross, and always be ready to share its weight declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and for ever. Amen. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 43 Give judgment for me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked. For you are the God of my refuge. Why have you cast me from you? And why go I so heavily Why the enemy oppresses me? O send out your light and your truth that they may lead me, and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling, that I may go to the altar of God, the God of my joy and gladness, and on the lyre I will give thanks to you, O God, my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to St. Luke Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. But when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him, and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then they put an elegant robe on him 
and sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders of the people, and said to them, You've brought me this man as one who is perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! There was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate wanted to release Jesus, address them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict, that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. Luke's story of Jesus' betrayal, condemnation, torture and suffering is read in the church's public worship this week. It's the account of a second-generation Christian of Gentile parents. His main interest is to make Jesus known to the wider world of the Roman Empire beyond Palestine. He's found out as much as he can about Jesus from eyewitnesses. He wants his readers to, to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and Saviour of the world, and he sets out to give an ordered account of all he's learned about Jesus and his teaching. Like his target audience, he understands how the Roman legal system works, and states, without exaggeration or rhetoric, how unjust is the way Jesus is treated. Recently, it took a dramatised documentary, Mr Bates vs the Post Office, to awaken public and political conscience to the injustice perpetrated against postmasters by those idolising a computer system, refusing to believe it could possibly fail. Plain facts were presented in simple, dramatic form. It's exactly what Luke did twenty centuries ago, to tell the world about Jesus and his death. Luke understood the Jewish religious establishment felt threatened by the breath of fresh air presented by the words and deeds of Jesus. It was why they conspired to kill him by fair means or foul. With false witnesses making allegations against him, and no defence allowed, it was easy for a religious court to condemn him to death for blasphemy, but it had no authority to execute him. They had to approach Pilate, who presided over state forces of law and order. Pilate realised what they were up to, but avoided insisting on an independent case review or a retrial under his jurisdiction. As far as Roman law is concerned, Jesus wasn't a person of interest, just a peasant without citizens' rights. To be seen doing something about the complaint, so as not to avoid the Jewish religious establishment, Pilate sends Jesus to Herod for evaluation. Herod is the civil ruler of Judea, not a religious leader, but an Arab warlord pretending to be Jewish. He has no opinion about Jesus to help Pilate resolve the case, Pilate turns to an ancient version of social media, 
randomly crowdsourcing an opinion. Religious influences go about spreading lies and poison opinion against Jesus in the street. Pilate falls back not on the rule of law, but custom. Freeing one of two condemned criminals as a populist gesture at Passover leaving another to die. It's like reality TV show voting nowadays, isn't it? Jesus doesn't protest, defend himself or condemn. He's mostly silent, saying very little indeed. It's outrageously unfair. The power of ill will, lies and cynicism combined to destroy an innocent man for whom truth and love alone matter. Jesus waits in patience and humility to have his say. His last word overheard is a prayer on the cross as he's put to death. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Christ loved those who were his own and showed them how deep was his love for them. Let us pray to receive his mercy and compassion. By your agony and trial, by your blessed cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were servant of all. Lord, have mercy. Help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved and the oppressed. Lord, have mercy. Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in danger. Lord, have mercy. Heal the sick in body and mind, and provide for the homeless, the hungry, and the destitute. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, in your tender love towards the human race, you sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, deliver us from the bondage of sin and lead us to the promised land of eternal joy and peace. Amen.